So the last thing we've got to do is talk about how we can estimate our population variance and standard deviation. If we're going to estimate or use a confidence interval for population variance, which is going to be very similar uh, method-wise to doing any other confidence interval, the only difference is we're going to have a different critical value. We're going to have something based on a chi distribution, chi squared distribution, which is on your table. I'm going to show you how to use that today. Other than that, it's the same idea for a confidence interval. You just need to know how to use the table. Also for hypothesis testing, same idea, same seven steps. You just need to know how to use the table. So we're going to find that out right now. So right now, we're going to be estimating population variance and with it, standard deviation. What was a symbol for population variance? Do you remember that? Sigma, sure, with what? Squared. Squared, great. So that's variance. So population variance, we're talking about sigma squared. Now I'm going to give you a definition. How we look at the distribution of sigma of our variance is with something called a chi-squared distribution. Chi squared, it's like you're making a big X. One of them's curvy and one of them's straight. That's a chi squared. I know it's weird. It's kind of fun to draw, though. It's kind of nice. Oh, this looks cool. I like this. So anyway, I get to draw that a lot when I was in my fraternity. Actually, we just made an X because we were lazy. Uh, but that's a chi squared. And here's how you find out a chi squared test statistic or the marker for chi squared according to your population variance. Here it is. You take n minus 1. What's n stand for, ladies and gentlemen? Sample size. Great. Or if you're talking about um, trials, number of trials. But in, in our case, sample size. Then you're going to take s squared. What's s? What's s squared then? S would be sample standard deviation. So what's s squared? Sample variance. Sure, with the S, that's sample variance. You okay with that? And then this right here, sigma squared, that's population variance. So we got a couple things going on. We've got N is still sample size, no big deal. That really hasn't changed all semester long, N is sample size. S is sample standard deviation, so S squared is sample variance. And sigma squared, well, that's our population variance. That's what we defined it as. Notice how this compares your sample variance to your population variance. That's really all it does. And it's also based on your sample size. So larger samples have a different reading than smaller samples. That should make sense because the larger our samples, the more accurately we're going to depict our population variance uh, with our, our sample variance. So those things all work together. Every time we have a marker, it's typically based on sample size and comparing two things. With our means, it was mean, a sample mean minus population mean, right? We compared it to standard deviation and the sample size. Here, we're having just our, our variances and our sample size. A couple things about this. Um, the distribution I'm about to show you, right here, the our chi squared distribution, it looks similar, similar to a normal distribution. But I gotta warn you, this thing is not a normal distribution. It is kind of a bell-shaped curve, but it's not symmetrical. This thing starts at zero zero, shoots up, and has a tail to the right. This is a chi squared distribution. And that's how it looks. A couple things about it, we notice right off the bat, it is not symmetrical. It's not like a normal distribution. So write these things down. It definitely is not symmetrical. Another interesting thing about it, it's not like a it's not like a Z score. These aren't Z scores, these are, are chi squared scores, which means that. There's no zero in the middle. Zero is actually off to the right hand side. Why? Because standard deviation and variance can't be zero. You can't even get a negative out of that. So all of our distribution of, chi of our, our variances are positive. That means we're not going to have a negative. These are all greater than zero. They're all non-negative. So values are non-negative.
I mean, look at the way the formula is. Look at the board here real quick. Look up here. Can that be negative? No. Can that be negative? No. Can that be negative? No. Really? You can have a negative sample size? I'm going to select negative eight people. Ha 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 ha. They're very depressed people, hence the reason why they're negative. No, we can't do that. That doesn't make sense. So positive times positive over positive is going to give you positive. You're never going to get a negative. These are not like Z scores. They're not like T scores. They will not be negative. Also, this is going to deal with our degrees of freedom. Uh, one thing you do need to know is that as degrees of freedom goes up, this has less and less of a tail. In other words, as your sample size up, it goes up, that means your degrees of freedom goes up, right? That means this is going to become more symmetrical. So as degrees of freedom goes up, this becomes more symmetrical. Does it ever get to symmetrical? No, but it becomes more symmetrical. As degrees of freedom goes up, the distribution becomes more symmetrical. Also, probably the biggest thing for you, this is the hard one to remember. Every other chart that you've dealt with has given you um, critical values from the, and it deals with the area to the left, whatever that value is, right? Remember that? Z scores, area to the left. T scores, area to the, actually, area in the tails. Chi squared is always based on the area to the right. I know it's weird. But it's always based on the area to the right, whatever critical value you're finding. So please write that down. This is a big one for you. This is the biggest one. It's the, only, the, uh, the biggest difference besides not having a zero in here and not being symmetrical. It gives the critical values for the area to the right of them. Fortunately for us, the area is still 1 under, under that chart. That's okay. It's, that idea stays the same. But it gives the critical values for the area to the right. Now, would you like to learn how to find those critical values? I hope so, because that's what we're going to do anyway, so you may as well want to do it, right? This is the last time I'm going to ask you, would you like to find something out? Oh, how sad. <laughs> what if you said no, you just want to go home? Like, oh, bummer, that sucks. <laughs> well, um, now our nice blue screen as this thing warms up. Here's what we're going to do. Let's suppose that we have a sample size of 12. We're dealing with a 95% confidence level. Remember those confidence levels we were talking about? Yes. So we're back to the idea of confidence intervals. I want to find the critical values based on the chi-square distribution. Here's how your table is going to look. It's going to look like that. Right now we're just focused on critical values. You're going to draw a chart like this just like you normally would with a, a standard normal distribution with, with any other uh, confidence intervals or, or hypothesis testing. That's, that's what we would do, right, is draw a picture of that. Typically with confidence intervals we didn't have to do it, but, but here I want you to see what's going on. Firstly, can you tell me what my alpha is? Where are you getting the point zero five? <clears throat> Good. We know alpha and confidence level is a, a, a complementary idea. So th those things have to be one minus the other. So one minus confidence level gives us our alpha. Our alpha is point zero five. Here's the deal. If we're talking about a <coughs> confidence interval, what that means is that we have two values that are stating a left and a right bound for our level of confidence to which we are certain 
the actual population variance will fall in that range. Remember, we're talking about those confidence intervals, how we have those two numbers, not just one number, right? So tell me something. If I have these two numbers here, how much area is here and how much area is there? How much? Well, why not 0 0.05 and 0 0.05? That would make an alpha of 0 0.10. Are you clear on that? So with confidence intervals, you do have that split. It's very, very much like a two-tail test. Remember talking about two-tail tests? Very much like that. So this is 0 0.025, that's alpha over 2. That should be familiar. We've done that stuff before. And this is alpha over 2, or 0 0.025. Which region do you feel okay with that so far? All right. Now, do you look this up in a z-score? Do you look this up in a t-score? No. It's neither of those things. You look this up in your chi-square distribution. I'll show you how to do that right now. So take that out. the table of which we are speaking. It says the chi-squared distribution off to the, the top there. Over here we see our degrees of freedom. Are you still familiar on how to find degrees of freedom? Yes. Yes. Pretty easy based on your sample size, right? How do you find degrees of freedom from your sample size? Yes. So in, the, in the, uh, the example I was just giving you, what is our degrees of freedom? 11. Good. 12 minus 1 gives us 11. So we're right, we're right here. It breaks it down nice, nice for you. Now here's what this says. Notice at the very top it says area to the to the left? Area to the right. Area to the right of your critical value. Now here's the issue. Because this table is not symmetrical and there's no negative values on it whatsoever, you with me? You can't just find one and make it negative. There are no negatives. You have to find two for every single case that you're doing. You have to find a left chi-square and a right chi-square. Are you seeing that? There's no negative. They're all positives. It's not symmetrical. If it was, I mean, that'd be nice. You could take a positive and a negative. There's, there's no negative to take. It's not a symmetrical chart. So what you're looking at is the area to the right of whatever critical value you want. Now, the table I had you draw, it had an area to the right. That area was 0 0.025. Look at your, your table that you drew down from what I, what I just wrote on the board, right? 0 0.025. So we're going to go over here to the area to the right, 0 0.025. Hey, it's on, the, it's on the chart, isn't it? We're going to follow that down to our degrees of freedom, 11. And you're going to get 11, okay, 0 0.02. That's the area to the right. I'm going to follow my degrees of freedom over to the area to the right, and I'm going to get 21.92. Did you find 21.92 as well? 21. So write down 21.92 as your marker for your right critical value on your chi-squared distribution. So this is a right chi-squared distribution critical value. That's what it is. It's a right chi-squared distribution critical value. Let's find the left. If you notice this, this is going to give you your rights. This is going to give you your lefts. Do you see how the numbers are different at the top? So this is all those areas to the right. They're small. This one says, okay, the area to the right of this. Now do me a favor, look at your the table or the, the picture I had you draw, that distribution. The area to the left is 0 0.025, correct? Because we split it. Point zero